I'm so glad you said that because as you were as you were talking about that, I thought, you know what? Why do we? This is a great beer to have in the morning. Yeah, this is waffle so, Belgian waffles with syrup and salty, meaty bacon on the side. Pints and Pairings is brought to you in part by Word Driving and the Beer Cave. Learn more about our sponsors at hopheadshead.com slash pints and pairings. Hello and welcome to Pints and Pairings. I'm Curtis Taylor for all of you and how, and our podcast listeners, also known as Hopheadshead. And I'm Jason Hendrick from Everybody's Hungry. Tonight, Curtis, we are celebrating. We Woo-hoo! have, yeah, zing, <laughs> where's my little noisemakers? We are celebrating the Pints and Pairings one year anniversary as a webcast, podcast, webisode, whatever term you identify with, we qualify. I'm not sure how we made it this far. I mean, I had this harebrained idea that I wanted to drink beer at five uh, at nine o'clock in the morning <laughs> once a week, and somehow we were able to sell it to our our partners, yeah. and and they bought into it. They're My like, wife's like, "Wait, you're gonna drive to Camarillo?" <laughs> Drink beer for two hours and talk about it, and then drive home. I was like, yes. Well, but quickly, on my feet, but we're going to lunch afterward. That helps. <laughs> my wife was, was kind of similar. She was happy that I wasn't driving. But you live at the studio. <laughs> I know. She was happy that I wasn't driving, but she was also concerned about how you were going to get home. Yeah. And, and I, too, said, well, you know, we're just going to start off with some small beers. We're going to do five, six ounces a piece. It's, and, and, and thankfully, it, going like through the concept of the show, we wanted to work our way through, initially, the core BJCP styles. So we were literally were starting at the Pilsners and Lagers and really low sessions. We started with... The American, we started with <laughs> adjunct. I mean, this was light loggers. We started at BJCP number one. And if I could, if, if you would just indulge me a little bit, this is how that first one sound, sounded. <clears throat> Hello, I am Curtis Taylor, and I talk about beer. Hello, Jason. <laughs> it's so it dead was, on. It was, it was a little a little stiff, a little... You know, we have some really supportive friends. We've got some friends here in the audience tonight who are supporting our anniversary show. But those first, like, three episodes <laughs> were... We like the concept. We're talking about some cool information. It's a little drab. But beer should be fun. And I was like, yeah, I, I can understand that. We're not having too much fun. I... I was torn. I wanted to be really serious about <laughs> we, we had our style guys open. A, that lasted maybe four episodes. We're like literally looking down the specs. We're like, well. I couldn't do it. This Pilsner comes in. It should be between 4.8 and 5.3. Like, we are so precise. But now we love beer. We share our insight about it. We talk about the food we think that's going to go really well with it. And we're going to do some more of that tonight. The only things that I write down anymore, and I say that like I've done this beforehand, <laughs> like I've actually prepped for the show or done any kind of research, but tonight I did, was our sponsors. I want to make sure I want to get those and out. And this, before. my friends, is how I got home and how I get <laughs> home when I need to. So we want to say uh, special thanks to Lab805, our great sign out there on air. It's telling everyone out in the Barrel House 101 dining area that we are, in fact, back here talking on microphones. Yeah, exactly. We, we're on air. <laughs> Food Share of Ventura County, they are your primary sponsor for uh, a bunch of stuff you do outside of the show. Yeah, the Food Share is a, a prevalent brand here in the county. And, you know, I, we, instead of saying that they sponsor us, they really show a lot of support for us. It's about that joint exposure and marketing, and we love to carry that brand with us. When we're back at the, the Lauderton Studios, also known as my garage, uh, the Beer Cave, uh, you can find them at 231 Village Commons Boulevard. That's in Camarillo, right off the 101 freeway. They supply the beer for us, and, and they have been really generous in giving us whatever beer a, I've a asked for. A lot of for. beer. And if you like the concept of putting on a jacket to make your beer selections, go into the Beer Cave. Right. A, a heavy selection of California beers they've got a you know uh, imports and, uh, and a bunch of other american beers but heavy on southern california uh, you can find them on facebook uh, village commons market and deli on facebook we're driving is how i'm going to get home tonight a, a a night of celebrating one year anniversary 
I'm going to be in no shape to drive home one way or about it, <laughs> any way around it. Uh, go to we'redriving.com, their DD uh, designated driving service, whether you need help getting home from the doctor or if you need help getting home from Barrel House 101. From doctor's orders. There it is. And, of course, Barrel House 101. Joe be sitting back there in the corner. Uh, more and more often, we kind of take over the back room and, and put it to our use as beer suggestion ears. Definitely. But if you're a craft beer lover who wants to grab a bite to eat, they're located right off the uh, California Street exit here in the heart of Ventura. 101 beers on tap. And as you said, we leverage a lot of the breweries that come through here to showcase their beers and talk about the food that can be put with it. So thanks to Barrel House 101 for putting us up. We're going to kick up the volume just a little bit. we got some more uh, audience members coming in, so we want to make sure everybody can hear us tonight. Again, a really cool selection. Part of the show, as we said, is all about sharing core styles, beers that, and breweries that we love, and the food that goes with them. So tonight's flight, we're going to go through a Pilsner, a Porter, a Belgian, and a double IPA. Each one of those reflects a category that we've really come to love and come to showcase. And we're going to try to not only get our feedback out there, but try to get some audience feedback about these beers. A a real core lineup tonight. Absolutely. We'll get started with the Pilsner. And this is a beer uh, beer style that is underappreciated. We talked about that in the pre-show. I've come to really love over the last few years uh, just as because it is so simple and uh, there's water and yeast there's one kind of barley and one kind of hops and that's it and so if you if you don't have any kind if if your brewing setup your system has any defects in it you can't brew this beer because you can't hide it well you know our buddy kevin up at uh, santa barbara brewing company is very adamant about what a pilsner represents the brewing industry and his philosophy is it takes a lot of skill, a lot of patience, and a lot of love to make a Pilsner. Because, again, you only have those four ingredients. And it's got to come out great and really showcase those ingredients in the best way possible without covering anything up. So, so tonight's selection. Well, it's the, the Trumer Pils. And, and actually here at Bear House 101, there's three or four different ones. You've got Paradise Road Pilsner, which is a really great one. Peevil Pils from Firestone Walker. Uh, I'm, you know, there's a handful of Lagunitas has one, North Coast has another one. These are all really solid forms. The reason I chose Trimmer Peels is just because we're going to feature Firestone Walker down the road, but they've got a brewery in Berkeley, and then they also have a European brewery as well. And so between the two, that's, you know, the European one is servicing all of that market. The Berkeley one is servicing the, the American market. What I love about this beer is just how crisp and clean it is. And, you know, coming from with a a name like Hophead Said, it's, it may seem counterintuitive that I would, that one of my, say my second favorite beer style is a Pilsner. But for good reasons, this one is. And, you know, we'll taste through it here in just a second, get a couple tasting notes become reacquainted with it, so to speak? Sure, and this example here, you know, when we talk about a Pilsner, again, only four ingredients, it's a volatile beer in terms of shipping it across the ocean. So the fact that they have a brewing facility in Berkeley as well allows us to get as fresh of a Pilsner as possible. Um, you know, for it to degrade and break down is really gonna do a disservice to this beer. There's not a lot to hold it up over um, a long boat ride across the ocean. One of the iconic brands, however, is Pilsner Raquel. Uh, and Pilsner Raquel, you know, uh, as a English sort of translation, just means the very first or the original Pilsner. And you can get that anywhere here, you know, tra- from Trader Joe's to your, to your local market. I just read something really interesting, though, about Pilsner Raquel is that they're going to brown bottles. One of their major defects they've always for, been green bottles. since they've been bottling and exporting has been that it's been green bottles. And so you open it up, you get the, the light struck, which is the skunky odor that comes through. Uh, and there's already a, a, a slight sulfur note in it. But the, the decomposition, the, the fluorescent lights, the UV lights, uh, decompose the, the hop components in there and just create a really pungent skunk smell sure and remind us of the hops that are in a pilsner what it so you know depending on where you're who's brewing it what they're doing if it's an americanized version whatever uh but it's sats hops s-a-a-z pronounced sats kind of as in a t 
Uh, and then the, the barley also has this really light, bready flavor, uh, crackery. You know, I mean, you could probably go that route. Uh, saltine without the, the, the without salt. Without the salt, right. sure. And I think one of the things you mentioned earlier that I can totally agree with is the fact that it's an undervalued beer. Uh, the crispness, the freshness is definitely there. A little bit of grassy, that kind of typical bready aspect. But there's a there's fruit that comes out. There's some mm-hmm. fruit that people don't typically identify. And for me, there's a little bit of a, like underripe pineapple. There is a, almost a pomelo kind of component where you get a little bit of a citrus aspect, but not that sharp citric acid like from an orange or a tangerine. It's kind of a muddled um, citrus and pithy aspect. It, it has some variety and diversity there. And food can be paired with this. And I'd say on a couple different realms. One either as a cleansing component where you're kind of washing away something really hearty or spicy or again something very light and refreshing in the summertime to help heighten fruit and uh, produce and this this beer kind of blows out the whole uh matching intensities uh rule of thumb that we we like to use you know wine you have white wine with white meats red wine red meats that that kind of thing which you know drink whatever you want to drink, you know, whatever you enjoy. With beer, there's a similar sort of thing with matching intensities. This beer, though, as coming in as golden as it is, uh, you would figure that you would want to stay with white meats, which you certainly can. And it can add a nice, depending on the hop profile, can add a nice pepper sort of aspect to it. You're talking about some of these, um, these citrus sort of fruit flavors. You know, that'd be a really pleasant kind of addition to uh, a white meat but there's no reason why you can't go up against carnitas with this exactly and i was gonna my we've talked about this before and it just is such a no-brainer for me when you look at a really awesome carne asada with some fresh lime juice and cilantro that little bit of lime zest and um, tang and that kind of acidity partner with that really pungent and intense herbaceousness of the cilantro but then you get that nice irony just juiciness of that steak with a tortilla it's a classic pairing that should be leveraged i was looking at doing some research for this and and i came across one of your pairings that we did for the the casa pacifica and you were talking about zucchini latkes Mm, and and that was that was with the paradise pilsner but it's it's one of those things that we could use here too and one of depending on the hops that are used in in the Pilsner, you can get a, a slight vegetal component. And so you're looking at the zucchini, which will take on the flavors of everything else. But it does. It gives it that uh, that vegetal mouthfeel vapor. Sure. I mean, kind of as you're exhaling. Now, don't deny the sweet aspects either, though. Just to let the cat out of the bag, we've got dessert flights that will be coming in tonight from uh, pastry chef Anastasia Chavez here at Barrel House 101. And I got to sit in on her sampling yesterday and kind of talking through the the tasting components of these beers. Some things that were thrown out were candied ginger and uh, coconut. We were actually thinking about doing maybe a coconut ice cream at one point that would leverage um, some of those fruits and that pineapple aspect that I was tasting. What she settled on, I think, is going to be a really awesome um, resonating partnership. She's going with a, a cookie. You know, there's, you typically have like the shortbread cookies with a little raspberry jam, the gel thing in the middle. She's doing her own take on that. And instead of the middle being raspberry and a true shortbread crispiness, um, it's going to be some ginger in the cookie with a lemon curd. Mm. So you get that creamy aspect, that tart um, acidity from the lemon zest and the lemon juice. I think it's going to be a really cool pairing to really prop up this beer. I'm, I'm excited to try that. I think that... Uh, the ginger is a spot on, uh, just with the the crisp hop notes that are coming out of the beer. I have to make sure that I save some for later on because <laughs> I'm trying to suck this one down. You know, uh, going the the opposite route too is uh, one of my favorite uh, Chinese dishes. Now, the, I use that term loosely because it's it, it's fried noodles. But what I really like is fried noodles uh, with pepper. Okay. And so adding that pepper on top of it and the, the pepper resonating with the, the crisp hop uh, the crisp hop nose or the profile, but then also having that bready 
cracker bread flavor that is going to resonate with the the noodles as well. But then just being able to wash everything out when you're yeah, doing it because you, it's going to be a heavy the oil. Crisp wash is going to be a key. Now, not to deny my newly. I mean, it's been 10 years. Can I say newly acquired California roots? It's been 10 years since I've been out here. But let's talk about lentils and quinoa for a minute with this beer. Something nice and earthy and nutty, and especially with the, the lentils. I mean, lentil soup is a, a classic thought when you think lentils. But there's something about the way that they provide that, that nutty... Um, I can't even, like starchiness that I think would go well with this. But the quinoa is something that my wife has really been leveraging a lot lately because you can make red basic red quinoa and throw anything you want in there. She's done squash. She's done pine nuts. She's done arugula. All those things, especially when they're fresh, you know, crisp, ripe tomatoes now that we're getting into the summer season. Any of those fresh vegetal notes are really going to just make this um, beer pop both in the crispness factor, but also in that little bit of sweetness. It's, it's going to say, hey, I already am noticing some vegetal aspects in the food. Let me prop up my sweetness in the background. You know, I'm not a, a lentil fan by any means. <laughs> it's because they get in your teeth, Curtis. <laughs> well, I don't know what it is about it. I mean, it, it's, it's similar to, say, kidney beans. I don't care for the bean flavor <laughs> and lentils have that same sort of they're just smaller but there's a lot more of them that's true they <laughs> so, come so in the force flavor, the flavor is still there but I like your I like your pairing suggestion and I am the next time lentil shows up on a menu somewhere at my house like oh we're gonna do this I'm going to make sure that I have a pilsner with it it'll give me something to look forward well, to well I'm gonna give you one more pairing <laughs> idea for this beer before we switch over because I know you come from a vegetarian household you're a meat eater, but your wife is a vegetarian that likes to, you know, enforce the menu occasionally. <laughs> what about a really cool cauliflower gratin? You get that interesting kind of funky pungency of the cauliflower with that great creaminess and richness of the cheese and some breadcrumbs on top, you know, a little buttered crumbled breadcrumb mm -hmm. aspect to finish it off. You're getting that bready resonation and, again, that creamy richness of the cauliflower and cheese. I think, yeah, uh, I would go. <laughs> I even, love when I stun you. We've I been would, doing this I, so well, long. You know, I don't know necessarily why. Uh, I would just, I would even just go scalloped potatoes and just throw oh, that. I hate scalloped on. potatoes. You hate? Scalloped oh potatoes? my god, I have bad memories as a kid from scalloped <laughs> potatoes. My mother used to always do. She loves scalloped potatoes and ham, but she always did the box version with those like plastic yeah, wafers of potatoes that you had to rehydrate. Right. Oh, it was the worst because I'd have to sit at the yeah. table until I ate them all and the cheese was always greedy because it was powdered in the box initially. We, it's the worst. We come from the same roots because I I never uh, I never cared for them as a kid growing up. I always up picked either. out the ham bits because we used a nice ham steak and cubed that up <laughs> but then we used the stupid box scallop potatoes. Well, I ended up I'm trying to think of what they were called, potato casseroles. Uh, that was instead of at a restaurant, instead of calling it scalloped potatoes, they call them p potato casseroles. And and when it came to me, I was so disappointed because here, my wife was saying, "Oh, you gotta try it. They're so great. It's these potatoes and they're baked and all this." And I'm just thinking, like a big old stuffed baked potato, but it's just scalloped potato. Right. But when it's fresh, everything is. It's delicious know, when yeah, it's, it's fresh. I've grown up from that for sure. Absolutely. Just a couple minutes left, and uh, you know because we don't want any of the rest of these beers in our flight to warm up. I've got two non-food beer pairings. Actually, right. I've got three of them. Because this is one pints of them. and pairings, not pints and food pairings exclusively. Ex exactly. So the other thing with Pilsners is they're great for hot days. Yes, because sir. Because they're the, the, the light alcohol, they're not going to fill you up. So whatever you're doing, you know, if you happen to be a sporty type, if you're, you know, out There's beach actually, volleyball or crisp or lager or Pilsner whatever. after a long run is amazing. There you go. Uh, this is my favorite beer to have when I'm responsible for getting people home. I know I can have this beer, and there's no worries about me getting into a car and getting home. Now, your mileage may vary. I mean, if you're a little person. <laughs> hey, what are you trying to say, Curtis? Why <laughs> if are you you're looking a little at me? person, you may not be able to finish this whole beer and, still, and not be impaired. So, you know, learn your body cues, everything else. But it's a great beer to, to, to enjoy that way. Because I was doing this whole new video series about a bunch of stuff about beer and I focused on Pilsners for the, the very first episode, I found a fantastic movie 
called Closely Watched Trains, and it's a Czech movie. It's subtitled, but it just it goes way back to a day when movies were so much more than uh, explosions and vibrant colors. So it comes. So y- you know where I'm heading with this. Like you know, I read all of the reviews of Transformers that came out just two weeks ago, and it was not from wall to wall fight the whole time. There was nothing <laughs> in between. There is no fighting in this. It is just conversation and slow going. Um, you know, there's there's a certain amount of. Uh, sex in this movie so that doesn't ha- that doesn't hurt but <laughs> but you know I if you're gonna I'm sit not down, even sure how to respond to that or if you, I should you go, you go you go to Trader Joe's you pick up a six pack of pills and Raquel you go you sit down uh, and in 90 minutes you're done with the movie and you're done with three four five six right, beers right. and the name of the movie again is Closely Watched Trains Closely Watched Trains and, it, and the best part is is it's public domain so you can find it everywhere excellent as we love it that's so that's it for me really I mean other than that I'm just glad that I got to share my enthusiasm over this this brand that it keeps getting look, you know, keeps getting overlooked. Yeah. And whether it was uh, giant Belgian beers, you know, five years ago or or ten years ago, and then all of a sudden it was giant hopped beers, and now it's giant sour beers. I mean, this one just keeps. Well, it's just like any other American um, hobby and culture, like cars. We love our cars big. We love our food big. We love everything big. So. There's nothing uh, wrong with every now and then getting back to something simple like a great Chris Pilsner. Absolutely. You know, before we sign off, I want to make sure that uh, everyone knows that they can follow our conversations at, um, you know, hashtag pints and pairings, hashtag beer suggestion years. All of the archives are at hopheadsaid.com backslash pints and pairings. I like how you do that, that backslash. <laughs> it's my karate chop. What? <laughs> backslash. Pints and pairings, you can find all of us. I mean, you can keep track of everything. You can find us all over the place. But... All the links are there at hopheadset.com. Fights Pints and parents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else you want to say with us? No, nope, I'm ready on? to get on to the next beer. All right. I'm looking forward to this one. So, uh, you know, if you're listening to this on podcast, you know, make sure that you uh, wait a week and then you'll find the, <laughs> the next one or go back to the archives and look for Porter, yeah. anniversary show and Porter. And we'll be back in just a few minutes. And we'll see you at the next pour. Cheers. Cheers. Pints and Pairings is brought to you in part by The Beer Cave, located at 231 Village Commons Boulevard in Camarillo, California. If you prefer a cocktail or some vino, this neighborhood market also has a great selection of premium spirits and wine, along with an attached deli for a quick sandwich to go. When you stop in, be sure to mention that you heard about them right here on The Pints and Pairings Show, and maybe grab a sandwich for me on your way out.